Hey guys, I'm here with my recently upgraded Arduino CNC machine and I wanted to talk about some of the upgrades I made and why I think it's superior to my previous version and walk you through those. If you haven't seen how I built the original version, you may want to check out that video first as this will make a little more sense. Today we're going to talk mostly on the improvements made since the last version. All right, so the first thing you'll note is that I went to a 2.2 kilowatt spindle versus the 500 on the previous version. And the reason I did this is I want to get more into mass producing things and you can cut a lot faster and deeper with this larger spindle. All right, because the new spindle is so much heavier, I decided to abandon the round rails that I used in the previous video and opted for these solid ones, which as you can see are mounted very securely to the extruded aluminum assembly. Uh, that required me to update this plate to accept uh, the new bearings. And I also decided to put a motor on each side. The original version just had one going down the center. And I believe this will add a significant amount of rigidity to the design. A real nice thing if you decide to stick with the 500 watt spindle assembly is that it comes with its own z-axis and y bearings. We do not have that of course. On the new design we need a new mount and new mount plates and a new z-axis assembly. I designed this plate to be compatible with the mounts and with the z-axis bearings and I built this using my previous 500 watt version. All right, now these Z-axis bearings simply mount to a piece of extruded aluminum here. And I've got a cross piece here that supports the ball screw assembly as well as the motor. And I did go with a slightly larger motor here because it's got to lift a lot more weight with this 2.2 kilowatt spindle. All right, so here on the back side, the same extruded aluminum that's supporting the Z-axis bearings that is mounted to this plate which I also designed to be compatible with this type of linear bearing. Alright, so the y-axis rails mount the exact same way as my previous version to the piece of extruded aluminum coming up off of the gantry plates. And I decided to make this one just a little bit wider than the last version. I think the previous was 500 millimeters, this one is 700. I put a little piece of extruded aluminum on each side to support the bearing for the ball screw for the y-axis. I also put this piece all the way connecting across in order to support the cable chase. Now this machine is very easy to build except for these mounting plates which were difficult to design and manufacture. As you can see there's about a hundred holes here that need to be just in the right spot. So I've decided to save you guys the trouble. If you are interested, I've made these out of half inch plywood and I'm offering to sell them. I will leave the link to those and to the major components of this build in the description below. Now the frame of this design is very similar to the previous one, except this is actually a little more simple to build uh, because we don't have the bar going across between the two gantry plates anymore with the central screw. Um, the frame is much simpler on the ends. I've just added this brace across the bottom. And then as you can see here, having the two motors is going to add a lot of rigidity to the design. Just have a few cross braces underneath the wasteboard. And then here's the front. So overall, a much simpler frame design. Now while the mechanical design of this version is a bit simpler than the previous version. The electrical might be slightly more challenging and that's mostly due to the VFD required to drive the 2.2 kilowatt spindle. Here is the basic schematic and for those of you who do not want to just pause this YouTube video, I will leave a link for a free copy in the description below. Also you note that uh, because of space I only put one x-axis motor on here, but if you want to do double x motors, as I highly recommend, you simply wire them the same, uh, both in parallel, both on the Arduino side and on the 36 volt power supply. Also, uh, that shielded cable I mentioned, I left a link in the description to the cable that I used. 
you'll have a braid wrapped around the cable and you want to tie that to the ground wire on the VFD side, not on the spindle side. So just one side should be grounded. Otherwise you'll create a ground loop. Uh, as far as the power cord, I left a link to the power cord that I used. I used just an extension cord and cut the end off that I didn't need and turned it into a pigtail cable. So here in the United States, I put in a 220 volt, 20 amp outlet, which looks like this funny guy here. And fortunately for me, my breaker box was right there. So it was pretty easy to do. One thing to be very aware of is that these high powered spindles use alternating current and therefore they put out a lot of electrical interference. So it is very important that these cables be shielded cables and that they be shielded just on the VFD side as shown in my schematic. Now if you do not use a shielded cable, what you'll find is your stepper motors will oscillate and jitter up and down and you don't want that, especially when you're trying to make precision cuts. One thing to check on your spindle is that it is properly grounded. Unfortunately, many of these are made in China where the electrical codes are not up to the same standards as other countries. And so you may find that your spindle is not properly grounded. And the way to check is to check pin four on your connector, uh, either with an ohm meter from pin four to the exterior of the motor to make sure you have continuity. Another simple way is just to undo these screws, pull the cap off and make sure there are four wires attached. If not, yours isn't properly grounded and you may want to return it and get one that is. All right, when all is said and done, you should be able to take your ohm meter, take one pin, connect it to the ground on your plug and the other anywhere on your motor and you should hear that beautiful tone indicating a path to ground. And just for extra security, I put a ground bond to the frame. So let's do one final walk around the machine just so you can see it from different angles in case I miss showing you something. Uh, here we have our ball screw attached to the front leg and the rail, which is directly attached to the horizontal leg. We have our gantry plate here with two bearings on each side and here's our other bearing for the ball screw connected to the back leg. Uh, we have a rigid coupling connected here to the stepper motor in the back. And I decided to mount the stepper motor directly to the table. You don't have to do that. You could run a piece of aluminum off this back leg here if you wanted to. All right, just showing the same thing, but on the other side. And what's great about this design is there's really nothing underneath. So if you ever wanted to convert this to say, have a vacuum table, you could run a hose underneath and it wouldn't get in the way of the rails or the screws. All right, connected to our gantry plate here is this vertical riser piece of extruded aluminum that supports the Y and Z axis assemblies. We've got our lower bearing for our Y-axis. We've got our ball screw and our upper bearing all mounted to that side rail. Now moving across to the other side here, we have pretty much the same thing, except here we have our linear bearings and the back side of our assembly. Also this uh, cable chase. Now I put this cross brace in here just for a little added stability, but it's really not needed. Um, with it in, I can cut uh, Z-axis about three inches high, and with it out, I can get about four, which is pretty good. All right, here we have the back plate for the uh, spindle holder here. And I kind of want to show you how this works. Uh, this plate here has some recesses in the back for these bolts here. Uh, that way it can be flat up against these bearings. And uh, this piece here, this holder, does not come with these holes pre-drilled. So what I did is I took that piece and I clamped it on here and I match drilled from behind to make these holes. These pieces of extruded aluminum are mounted to this back plate here um, using these bolts here. And uh, of course, we've got the cross brace here to support the bearing. There's one down below for the lower bearing. And then a cross 
brace here to support the motor. All right, so down here below the deck, I've got my power supply. This is a 16.6 .6 amp, 36 volt power supply. And I have over here my grounding bus bar, which connects all the grounds together from all the devices. And this hot mess over here are my stepper motors. I'll probably clean these wires up later. I've got a positive and negative uh, bus bars for those. And of course, the brains of the operation here is the Arduino with the USB cable going to the computer. This relay and controller here would be for future upgrades and is not currently used. Now, I really enjoyed my last version CNC router. I think this one, though, is going to be hands down much better, much more rigid, and much more powerful. So I look forward to using this. As you can see, I've got about 30 inches of usable travel in the X direction, about 18 in the Y. I use this flattening bit here to smooth out my wasteboard. Um, for the spindle here, you are going to need uh, two wrenches. The top one uh, will be this 21 millimeter, and then you'll also need the 30 millimeter. And then uh, bits to suit your taste and depending on your project. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it useful. I'm very much looking forward to using this to help with my electronics projects and other hobbies that I have. Uh, if I missed anything, please leave your questions in the comments. I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. As always, thanks for watching and thanks for the support.